I, our Vice Chairman, Commissioner Harry Cohen, uh, also serving uh, on our board as a County Commissioner. And I'd also like to recognize the numerous elected officials that are in attendance today. We have uh, Commissioner Gwen Myers, Representative Andrew Learned, Council Member Orlando Guides, Craig Richards with the EDC, uh, Congressman Charlie Crisp was here earlier. Thank you for being here. Thank you, Charlie, my old friend. Thank you. Good luck today. <laughs> Commissioner, County Commissioner Pat Kemp, uh, Councilman Joe Citro. Um, uh, who else is there? Uh, also, my colleague from the airport, uh, Joe Lapano, best airport in America. So. Uh, you might not have noticed it yet, but there will be a large ship behind me coming down the channel, I'm told. Uh, and we're so happy to welcome all of you to Port Tampa Bay's container terminal. Our business in the container industry has grown by almost 38% over the last year. It's a trend that we expect to continue over the coming years. And in a matter of moments, the vessel, the MC Van MSC Vanessa, will arrive behind me. The ship will bring in consumer products that include furniture, appliances, textiles, food and beverage products, golf carts, restaurant supplies, promotional items, paper products, steel, building construction materials, kayaks and canoes, of course, for Florida, and more. In anticipation of the growth in this line of business, we have been working diligently and closely with our container terminal partner, Ports America, recently adding more paved storage right here on this yard and beginning construction of a brand new gate complex. We expect to receive three additional container gantry cranes post Panamax later this year in December and will soon break down ground on a new on dock transload warehouse facility. The money our port will receive from the RAISE grant will allow us to expand other areas of our very diverse uh, port and our diverse lines of business that bring additional supply chain efficiencies while having a generational impact on the region's economy and creating well-paying jobs. We are so thankful to the U.S. Department of Transportation for our allocation and grant funding. Thank you so much, Mr. Secretary, Deputy Secretary, that we are receiving today from the Rebuilding American Infrastructure with Sustainability and Equity, known as RAISE, Discretionary Grant Program. Our staff is deeply committed to the community that we serve. Throughout the COVID-19 pandemic, we remained hard at work open for business 24 seven, delivering the goods during a critical time in our nation's history. And people relied on those goods to get to the shelves. And I'm so proud of our team that made that happen. Port Tampa Bay is by far Florida's largest port, handling more than 33 million tons of cargo each year. And we are also Florida's largest port in terms of physical size encompassing over 5,000 acres. We support nearly 85,000 jobs in the Tampa Bay region, and we generate over $17 billion in economic impact. Port Tampa Bay handles a wide variety of bulk, break bulk, and containerized cargoes, as, being, as well as being a fuel energy gateway, a major cruise home port, and a hub for shipbuilding and repair. One of the fastest growing parts of our footprint is our satellite facility known as Port Red Wing. Port Tampa Bay will use our raise funding to create Berth 301 at Port Red Wing. This will provide room for a third large ship to be worked efficiently and keep us competitive in serving the ships of today and tomorrow. Our tenants and customers, including the Mosaic Company, Logistech, Sesco, Arden Mills, and Tampa Tank, will directly benefit from this project as they diversify 
their operations and make long-term plans and commitments to our region. This project makes an important and immediate economic difference for West and Central Florida's non-containerized industries, including cement, prilled sulfur, aggregates, steel, food and agriculture, wallboard and, and construction materials, and project cargo, among others. In just the past 12 months, the port handled over 1 million tons of cargo at Port Red Wing. And about 10 million people reside within 75 miles of our port complex, and roughly 200,000 new residents have made their homes in Hillsborough County in the last decade, and it's continuing to grow. As area construction projects continue to boom, construction cargoes are needed nearby, and it makes perfect sense that Port Tampa Bay is utilized as the port closest to all this growth in the region and the I-4 corridor. This project fully optimizes the supply chain economics. And I'm also so proud to share that in addition to the numerous economic benefits, Mr. Secretary, this project will also eliminate nearly 3 million truck miles annually and reduce wear and tear in nearby roadways, highways, and the communities that this port serves. We will also aggressively support ladders of opportunity by introducing a Port Red Wing Regional Workforce Outreach Program to target certain businesses such as those that are small or women, minority, or veteran-owned companies. Our port is successful thanks to the wonderful partnership that we have with the City of Tampa and the dynamic leader leading our great city, Mayor Jane Castor. And we are privileged to have Mayor Castor supporting our port and serving on our Board of Commissioners here at the port. With Mayor Castor's steadfast support, which has enabled us to continue to pursue our vision and our strategy and expand our port's ability to serve our regions for years to come, it is my honor to introduce Mayor Jane Castor. Mayor? Much appreciated. Thank you, Paul. Um, Secretary Buttigieg, thank you so much for making time out of your incredibly busy schedule to be with us uh, today. And Deputy Secretary, thank you so much. It's very exciting to uh, welcome you to our beautiful city, what I feel in my heart is the most wonderful city in the entire nation. But to be here down on our port uh, celebrating such a great uh, announcement. Uh, as many of you know, the foundation of our economic growth and quality of life here in the Tampa Bay region uh, depend on a number of things, but two of the most important elements are our infrastructure and the people in our community. And we're here today to celebrate uh, a great announcement for our infrastructure. This new berth will provide Port Tampa Bay with greater capacity for larger ships, as we have heard, and giving us the infrastructure that we will need to improve and increase our supply chain in one of the country's fastest growing regions, which is what Tampa Bay is. At the same time, this project is going to create hundreds of jobs um, amongst one of our largest uh, employers in the entire Tampa Bay region today. This is a big deal today and we are very excited to be a part of it. It took an entire team to make this happen, starting with uh, the Port of Tampa Bay and the leadership uh, that runs this great port and grows it each and every day. But it also takes leaders at the federal level, without a doubt. And we like to thank our amazing Congresswoman Kathy Castor for all that she does for us. But when it comes to championing Tampa Bay, she is the number one person. She is the front of the spear that is always, always looking out for our best interests. So what I would like to do, if uh, Secretary, if you could just 
get distracted on something. I would like to talk about all the projects that, that Congresswoman Castor has brought to our community, but I don't want you to think that this is all that we need. This is just the beginning, and we have so much uh, yet to, to grow. Congresswoman Kathy Castor has brought the funding for our West River Walk, which we know is one of the jewels of our, our Hillsborough River on the east side, and now we'll have one on the west side, the Heights Mobility Improvements, which is another raise grant, and again, this uh, Port Tampa Bay uh, um, federal dollars that will be coming in here to improve our port. So this is a transformative project without a doubt, and we are very, very thankful for the bipartisan infrastructure uh, bill and law that has allowed this project to come to fruition here in our city. And no one understands this potential like our nation's mayors. And I wanna thank President Biden for appointing so many mayors to his administration because I think I could get Mayor Pete to agree that mayors are the ones on the front lines getting it done each and every day. And I have had an incredible relationship with uh, Mayor Landrow, uh, Landau and uh, Marty Walsh and also uh, Mayor Pete as well. So we are very, very thankful that you're in the position that you are in and all that you have done for our community. But let's bring up right now our star representative, Congresswoman Kathy Castor. Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome uh, Secretary P Pete Buttigieg and Deputy Secretary Trottenberg to Port Tampa Bay and the Tampa Bay community. This is just what we intended when we passed the Infrastructure and Jobs Act. Resources to help lower cost for our neighbors, create good paying jobs, often union jobs, and create a more resilient and stronger community. And as Secretary Buttigieg travels America touting how we are building a stronger America, it is clear that we're building a stronger and more resilient Tampa Bay area as well. And Mayor Jane Castor, who is, uh, often talks about her vision of transforming Tampa's tomorrow, this fits right within that vision to transform this community and invest in our people and our infrastructure Thank you, Mayor Jane, for recognizing that we are going to fight for every dollar to come to this community, whether it's for safer streets, sidewalks, roadways, uh, the river walk. Uh, the other big raise grant was for I-75 and Big Bend Road. Uh, also here in another uh, last year for the Tampa Heights Mobility Project and just a couple months ago, a grant here at the port for international ship and repair uh, for the maritime industry grant of over $880,000 to create good paying jobs. And my partner, Congressman Charlie Chris, was there with me by my side as we passed the Infrastructure and Jobs Act. Uh, and it's so heartening to see it come to fruition here in our community. Uh, I, I have to tell you a little secret. I saw Secretary Buttigieg just last week at the White House for the signing of the other historic investment package, the Inflation Reduction Act. And he told me this morning, he said, Kathy, uh, every time I see you, there's good news. And uh, Secretary Pete, I want that to continue uh, over and over again. But that Inflation Reduction Act also is a historic investment where people win over politics, where we're going to lower the cost for people but particularly uh, Paul, they're going to have significant new funding to clean up port operations, to electrify the port, reduce pollution, reduce emissions. And we talked uh, already with uh, Secretary Pete about how important that will be to cleaning up the air, cleaning up Tampa Bay, and that's what we're doing, transforming Tampa's tomorrow, lowering costs, creating good paying jobs, building a more resilient Tampa Bay area, and I couldn't be more thrilled that we can celebrate together today. Thank you. Thank you, Congresswoman Castor. You're so right. Every time you show up, good things are happening here. Kathy, please keep coming back. And Secretary, enable her to keep coming back. 
So it's now my pleasure to uh, ask Ken Williams uh, to come up uh, and give some remarks. Uh, Ken is the president of Teamsters Local Union 79. Ken? What a great day to be in Tampa Bay. Who would have thunk that we would expand like this and create a footprint for all of the country? I'm going on 39 years as a UPS driver. I've seen economies grow. I've seen them fall down a little bit, but bounce back. And being on the front line during COVID was quite an experience for myself and my coworkers. But one thing we did is we came to work and we worked to provide for the people in our communities. Keep it local. I'm also excited about the possibility of expanding our container service here in Port Tampa Bay. Because I know that when factories start manufacturing in this country again, they'll need to get it to port. There's the brown truck. We can help. And we, we know that in my years of coaching high school wrestlers at a boys school, that not every student was college bound but you have to find a vocation. So I strongly support apprenticeship programs. In the last couple of years, STEM has been on the lips of a lot of folks, but I'd like to expand it to S-T-E-A-M and throw apprenticeship in there because we can do that. Sit on Career Source in Pinellas. We have the WIOA Act. There's avenues of relief for people to have good paying jobs with benefits and a retirement. And with, with benefits, you don't rely on the government services. We can, we can do that. And I'd just like to th thank the Secretary and the Assistant Secretary for coming down and visiting us here in Tampa Bay, because I know it won't be their last visit. And the Mayor, the Congresswoman, and you also for bringing our, our welcoming committee on the ship. So thank you, Paul. So just think about what we can do. We can do great things especially with the funding that we've received and leave a strong footprint for working people. Thank you. Thank you once again, Ken Williams. Uh, and thank you for your 39 uh, years of service as a truck driver. Truck drivers to our port and to the ports across our country are the lifeblood for linking cargo between gateway ports and the retail customers and we couldn't do it as a nation without them. And it's now my pleasure to introduce U.S. Department of Transportation Deputy Secretary Polly Trottenberg. Deputy Secretary Trottenberg leads the department's implementation efforts for the 660 billion dollar bipartisan infrastructure law including dispersing like today the $78 billion in discretionary grants. So Secretary Pete, please keep helping Kathy bring the money home and I would also ask Secretary Trottenberg to please help Kathy bring the money home. But uh, the se uh, Deputy Secretary had worked in the Obama administration as both the Assistant Secretary and Under Secretary for Policy where she developed and implemented policies to serve the needs of local and state transportation agencies. Port Tampa Bay is so grateful for the Deputy Secretary's work and thank you once again for our raise grant allocation and welcome Deputy Secretary Trottenberg. Thank you so much, Paul. I am thrilled to be here today with my boss, Secretary Buttigieg, and this incredible lineup Congresswoman Castor, Mayor Castor, Ken Williams from the Teamsters. It is exciting to be here today, and as, as you've heard, thanks to the Biden-Harris administration's bipartisan infrastructure law, not only are we announcing the awards here today in Tampa Bay, but we are awarding 166 projects across the country for $2.2 billion. We're going to be creating jobs, opening up new contracting opportunities, and making our transportation system safer, more reliable, and more resilient. Here in Tampa, obviously, we are celebrating the award of the $12.5 million. And I have to say, I'll make a joke, Paul. Tampa Bay, your ship has come in. Yes. Look at that. Yes. 
So first of all, let me offer congratulations to everyone in this group who helped make this grant possible today. It's a very competitive program, the RAISE program. We get 10 times as many applications as we have dollars for. So if you've won a grant, it means you've got a really top-notch project. The Secretary is going to talk about, about it more specifically, but I just want to say it is a thrill to be here and see these, these dollars at work that came from the bipartisan infrastructure loan that the Congresswoman and so many of her colleagues were instrumental in getting passed. We at USDOT, we are very excited to partnership with you all. We're excited to roll up our sleeves and work closely here with you in Tampa and with transportation leaders all over the country to successfully execute all these RAISE grants. We look forward to seeing the work here in Tampa, the other projects across Florida and across the country. And Paul, I'll turn it back to you. Thanks so much. Thank you, Deputy Secretary Trottenberg. Uh, it is truly a team effort in getting receiving these grants. Our team's done a great job, but I know, um, uh, having worked in administration, how difficult it is to process all these grants. And I want to thank your team, Deputy Secretary and Secretary, for everything they are, they are often very available. They're very helpful. And even when you do not receive a grant, which has happened to us before, they give you great feedback on how to improve your opportunity to get the grant. So uh, it is now my distinct honor to introduce uh, U.S. Department of Transportation Secretary Pete Buttigieg. The Secretary was sworn in February 2021. His focus as Secretary is to deliver the world's leading transportation system for the American people and our economy. In his first year at the Department, the Secretary prioritized supporting the development and passage of President Biden's signature bipartisan infrastructure law. And since the law's passage, Secretary Buttigieg has, and his team have focused on effectively delivering the investments provided by this legislation, just as he's doing today, including uh, the RAISE grants, infra grants, port infrastructure grants, and we are so thankful to welcome here, big Port Tampa Bay welcome, uh, to the Secretary to deliver today's grant. Mr. Secretary, welcome. Well, thank you and good morning. Good morning. Good morning. And uh, a big thank you to uh, uh, Paul Anderson and his team, his staff, and, and the board, and of course all of the workers here at Port Tampa Bay. We're so delighted to be here celebrating with all of you. Uh, I want to thank Mayor Jane Castor, who uh, is doing such terrific work here on the ground. I continue to believe even more than I did when I was mayor, uh, that that is where uh, so much of the action is and the job has only become more demanding uh, since I wore that title myself. So thank you, uh, Mayor, and thank you for the warm welcome, and I do mean warm. Uh, <laughs> thank you to uh, Representative Kathy Castor for uh, the terrific work. She's right, whenever I see her, something good is going on, and today is definitely an example of that. Uh, Congressman Christ, I want to thank you for joining us on uh, obviously an exceptionally busy day and for your support for this historic funding uh, in this Infrastructure Investment and Jobs Act. Uh, and I want to acknowledge my colleague Polly Trottenberg, uh, who uh, provides such important leadership uh, and day-to-day uh, -day direction uh, in the department. Rare for us both to be in the same place because she's usually wherever I'm not. Uh, and it's a treat to be together and, and uh, we wanted to be here together because this is such a great example of what the Biden-Harris administration's vision for building a better America looks like in practice. We had a lot to celebrate, and much of that I just want to emphasize again is thanks to the tireless work of Representative Castor, Representative Christ, every member uh, of Congress who supported this effort. And there's so many other things we're celebrating, too. Uh, we were just at the White House, as, as Congresswoman Castor noted, uh, with President Biden signing the Inflation Reduction Act. That's going to make a difference for so many people uh, here and across Florida and across the country, making prescription drugs more affordable for seniors, making health insurance less expensive, helping families uh, save money on their utility bills. And I want to emphasize the bipartisan support for that bill among the American people, uh, regrettably not uh, in the House of Representatives, but around the country. Uh, people from both parties understand uh, what that means, and I'm so pleased we got that done. And meanwhile, thanks to this bipartisan infrastructure law, a once-in-a-generation investment in our infrastructure, we get to say yes to more good projects than ever. 
I do want you to understand, as, as the Deputy Secretary emphasized, how competitive this project, the, the, this, this effort is. We, we had $13 billion worth of applications, and we're able to fund about uh, two of that. So uh, uh, the, the mayor, uh, the congresswoman, uh, all of the leaders here have a lot to be proud of, that this is one of the projects that made the cut. Now, it's, it's easy to talk about all the uh, issues and challenges that we have in American transportation. Uh, uh, harder to actually roll up your sleeves and get something done. That's exactly what we're doing here. And I want to also stress that this program that's bringing us these funds is community driven. It's based on the idea that all the ideas and the plans and the designs shouldn't come from Washington, but more of the funding should. And that's exactly what we're doing by supporting this local vision. Tampa's just one of 166 communities across the country getting good news this month through this program alone. And this program, thanks to that legislation, is larger than it's ever been before. When you look through those project applications, you see the passion that communities have to have stronger, safer, cleaner, more vibrant, and inclusive economies. And here we have an example of that. That is why I am thrilled to be here to celebrate the award to the Tampa Port Authority of $12.6 million to build that new berth at Port Red Wing. We're delighted to be part of this. As the largest part in Florida, port in Florida, Port Tampa Bay is crucial to the region's economy. It's an essential part of our entire country's supply chain. The, the ship you see behind me likely contains furniture and other goods for our homes. And this port brings in everything from construction materials to fertilizer to energy. When those goods move more efficiently, that is part of our fight against inflation, too, because efficiency and fluidity in goods movement helps us keep shipping costs under control. The workers who help these ships come and go, who unload the cargo and do so much more to keep us up and running have endured an incredibly difficult two years. And I want to recognize uh, Ken Williams and all of the workers that he represents uh, who are the most important part of our supply chains. While so many were isolating at home, they were at work delivering essential goods around the country. They have kept us right side up during the pandemic. We owe them our thanks, and we also owe them a recognition that uh, what we call infrastructure, they know as their workplace. And they deserve a better workplace, and that's part of what we're delivering, too. When the new berth is complete, this project will mean that Port Red Wing can dock three of the largest cargo ships at the same time. It'll create over 800 jobs at the port and support industries that account for 85,000 jobs across the state. In its first year alone, it'll save drivers nearly 3 million miles of unnecessary travel. It'll save taxpayers over $5 million on highway infrastructure expense, prevent 7,000 tons of emissions, and strengthen our country's supply chain. And it's going to make a real difference in the lives of real people. So these grants, from, from here to, uh, to the other side of the country, from the largest cities to the smallest rural areas, they're supporting every kind of community. And I, I won't subject you to the whole list. But just to give you a little more of a flavor, in, in Louisiana, we're fixing a dilapidated pontoon bridge to cut the travel distance in half for two communities. In Tucson, the 22nd Street Bridge is a major route to downtown, but in such poor shape that emergency vehicles, not to mention trucks, uh, can't use it, adding about as much as half an hour each way. In Washington state, the current ferry that, that Lumi Island counts on is generations old, requires downtime, and even damages people's cars. So we're helping them replace it with a new one. And right here in Florida, we're also helping the Port of Miami build new rail tracks, building a new bus terminal in Clearwater, and adding new safety features to save lives along nearly 200 miles of the East Coast Railway here in Florida. In fact, Florida is getting near, nearly $100 million from this year's grants in that program alone. And that's just six of the 166 we're celebrating. I just want to emphasize in, in closing that uh, this is part of a broader vision of delivering for the American people. That's what knits together these infrastructure investments and the other laws the president has signed to save families hundreds or even thousands of dollars on health care, prescription drugs, and energy. The biggest investment ever in the fight against climate change, where so much is at stake here in Florida. Strengthening health care and benefits for America's veterans and supporting manufacturing so that we can make more things right here in America and export them from ports like Tampa, Port Tampa Bay. And of course, this community stands to benefit from all of this, making everyday life better in ways seen and unseen. 
So thanks again and congratulations, Representative Castor to Mayor Castor to this whole community and Port Tampa for your terrific work, which we are proud to support. And like any mayor, the one thing I love more than a, an award announcement or a groundbreaking is a ribbon cutting. So I'm going to keep an eye out for when this great project is complete. Thanks again for the chance to be here. Just before going to q and I think uh, if we have any Spanish language media, we'll, I'll just do a quick, quick recap. Uh, gracias a líderes como la alcaldesa Castor, la congresista Castor y el director ejecutivo del, puer del puerto, 